and welcome to C++ programming. We've talked a lot about classes, set and get functions, and constructors. But in today's class, we're going to talk about how to separate the interface from the implementation. And what do I mean about that? It's kind of like creating function prototypes at the top of your main function and then writing the functions below your main function so that you can see all the functions that will be used in the main function but it's separate so it's easier to quickly see all the functions that's used in the main function by just looking at the function prototypes and in the same manner we will do the same with classes we're going to separate the interface from the implementation and that means kind of like we're going to only do the function prototypes in the class and then outside the class we're going to do the actual functions of the class. Let's jump into the coding and see how we would do this. We are going to create a new C++ file and we're going to call this separate dot cpp and in this program we're going to start off again with hash include io stream our basic input and output library we're going to say using name space std int main void return zero we're gonna save this and build and run so our program compiled and executed successfully so we can go on we're going to create a class called student and we're going to create public and private sections Right. So, just to keep it simple, we're going to create a string called name and we're going to create an integer called age. Inside our student public section, we will create a student constructor and we're going to grab the parameters maybe the a and int b so what we will do is name will be equal to oops a and age will be equal to b and we will do function overloading and we will create another function constructor function and in this one without any parameters we will just declare it as nothing and age as zero and we will also create a void display display function and in this display function we will say see out the name the name in line and see out the age as age in line so as you can see if I zoom out a little bit you can see this class becomes very very big and if we create set and get variables or set and get functions sorry set and get functions for each one of these as well this class will become very, very big. So this is not very tidy programming. So let's quickly just go and create a object of student and we can maybe go and call student 
one dot display and we will build and run and see that there's no name and there's no age because we didn't supply any parameters so with the function overloading we will call this function the first constructor function so this is not very tidy programming so that's why we want to separate the interface interface from the implementation now what's the implementation and what's the interface this part here is the actual implementation of the functions and we want to separate that from the class so that we can see the class with all the function but function prototypes so that we can quickly see what the class will do and not see all the implementation parts so how do we do this and it's actually quite simple what we can do is we can take all these functions and copy and paste them outside of our outside of our class but where will this functions or how do we tell the program where this functions come from so what we've done now is we've copied and pasted all these functions and what we're going to do is we can take up all the implementation parts of these functions and our class will look something like this now if you see this you can say oh there's a constructor oh, there's function overloading with the constructor and there's display and there's private variables so it's actually very neat and easy to see then the class and its totality you can see everything that's going on very quickly and it's nice to read the coding like this so we're splitting the interface this is now our interface our class definition we call this our class definition and the class definition doesn't have any implementation but now we've got these implementation implementations of our functions but how do we link these functions to this class and it's also very quite simple what we do is we say student and we say that this function is connected to student and how do we connect this with the unary scope operator so we say student and the unary scope operator now we say this function is part of student class and then the student function again student class student function and here is the one trick with the constructor you may get a little bit um, confused but remember that it's to next to the name of the function so it will be there student display so now we can build and run see that everything works fine as you can see the coding still works perfectly and even if we add some parameters so that the other constructor will run we can say Jane 1234 we save and we build and run you can see that there is Jane and 1234 so this is good programming practice we can take all this and drop it there so if we build and run there's the program it still runs perfectly and now as you can see we've got our class and we've got our main function and it's now very easy to go and read and see what's going on in this program without seeing all the implementations of each function so if this becomes much bigger if there's set and get functions for each of the variables and there's extra um, functions that do some sort of calculation this class definition may become very big just with all this function prototypes 
So the class definition can become very big just on its own. So we want to split the implementation from the interface. We want to see the class definition. So that's all for me. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.